Now in this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at a brief history of the circulatory system. Now obviously today we know that the heart has four chambers. It has a double circulatory system, which means it pumps blood to the lungs. That blood then returns to the heart, so it can be distributed around the body to provide oxygen to respiring cells. But actually, what did we think previously? And historically speaking, what was our original model of the circulatory system? Now really, up until the 17th century, the Greek philosopher Galen's theory was accepted. So Galen was a Greek philosopher who lived many, many years ago. And even as far as the 17th century, doctors still accepted everything he taught. And what did he teach? Number one, that blood was produced by the liver. Number two, that blood was pumped out by the heart, which we know to be true. And that crucially, number three, that that blood was actually consumed by other organs of the body, so they effectively used it up. So who was the first person to actually come along and disprove Gallen? Well, his name was William Harvey, and he had his work cut out, really, because Gallen's theories were so widely accepted, they really had to fight against these well-established theories in order to share his findings. So he carried out a number of demonstrations. He showed, firstly, that blood flows in one direction only, and he showed that within the veins there were valves to ensure this unidirectional flow. As well as showing that the blood flows in one direction only, he showed that blood leaves the heart in arteries and returns in veins, which we still accept today. And that he also showed that the rate of flow of that blood is constantly high, meaning that it can't be consumed by the other organs. And be aware that this was all happening during the 1600s, so a long time ago. The guy was well ahead of his time. The final impressive thing he did was he predicted the presence of capillaries, which again we know to be true. The only problem is that he couldn't prove them because he had no microscope. They hadn't been invented at this time. So this is really impressive if you think about it, predicting the presence of things which you can't even see.